So, um, Sarah, uh, thank you for, for joining us and thank you in turn, in turn to Aaron and Alicia and Edel. Sarah, you're in first year, as is Aaron and Alicia and Edel. You're both in year four and currently the year fours are out on school placement and their year ones are working online uh, as we proceed into semester two and the year one program is coming to an end. So Sarah, would you maybe just tell us a little bit about yourself and what you were doing before you joined us in Thurlis and, and why you, you chose us? Okay, um, well, I live in Thurlis and I didn't really actually know that uh, MIC really, I did know it existed in Thurlis, but I wasn't too sure of everything that it, it had. And um, I suppose at the beginning I wanted to make a change so I wanted to do something different and uh, I decided one of the days I was just going to go up and check and see if the college was open and see what they had available and uh, lo and behold they had a course for me and I started to get excited the minute I found out that there was a course there for me so um, then I went to the after, shortly after that I filled out the CAO and went through all the processes and then uh, I went to the open day and once I went to the open day I kind of realized this is where I'm supposed to be because I just felt um well actually it was Finn your your um what you were saying on the day your announcements and things like that you had said that it's a place where you feel like you'd belong and I really did that day I really did and uh, I came out excited even more so I couldn't wait to start in September and then of course COVID hit so we couldn't really get to go in well we did the first day for the orientation but um say from the online experience it's been I suppose a bit of a downer for everybody mm. but mm. um no it's been great still like I still get to I don't know, like I feel the lectures are really kind, really good. Um, obviously, to even try to get to know you as a person when there's 140 odd first years, it's it's amazing actually how we can still get the one on one chats and talk. And uh, I've met up with people my own age and I've also met people. I have a few good friends that are 18 and 19, <laughs> so <laughs> it's great. Like it's been fun and uh, I can't actually speak highly enough of the college, to be honest, because even all the um, even with maths and business um, they're all the subjects are so interesting. Like, I don't know if it's just my age or whatever it is, but I think that I find it um, every topic that I can that I can uh, kind of, I suppose, um, tune in, even though it's online and I still have 150 things to do in the house that I can still focus because I'm interested in it, you know, so. Very good. And you, you're, thank you, Sarah. And you're chatting to us today from a car because you're collecting yeah. kids and so forth. And how did yeah. you juggle that with, with, with smallies and college and timetabling um, and, and, and that? Well, myself and my husband, I suppose, were taken in turns. <laughs> and uh, I'm going now over to Cashel to pick up my son because he drops him every morning at seven o'clock. It's my turn to pick up, but he has a job going. So, and I have my older daughter at home minding my little guy. So, okay, all right. We're all and, juggling everything. And and were you, did you have a choice around some aspects of your timetable that you could choose that it was negotiated or negotiated with the college? I could have done. I could have had my the like that. The just tutorials there from five to from four to six on a Tuesday, and I could have twisted it around to kind of make it a little bit easier but being online it's not so bad yeah. I can always um get the kids in they, they do their own thing anyway now they're kind of big enough some of them as well so it's fine but um I could have juggled it around if there was never a problem I was always told that if I wanted to I could change into a different tutorial group to make it easier for me but everything's kind of fallen into place it hasn't been hasn't been it hasn't been that hard. <laughs> OK, excellent. Thank you, Sarah. And uh, I'll move so to our year four student and we have Edel and Alicia and Edel, would you maybe like to do as Sarah did tell us your background? Yeah, your sure. No problem. So prior to MIC uh, Thurlis, I attended a larger university 
And I suppose one of the greatest experiences that I gained from that was kind of a reckoning and understanding of what I actually needed. Uh, That really was the essence of Mary Immaculate Thurless. I mean, everybody from the staff to the canteen ladies are really, really and truly like invested in your success. It's evident and it's something that's just there amongst us all collectively. Um, The collaboration that's available to us all there is fantastic. And yeah, so that's that's kind of how I picked Mary. I I went to a larger university initially and it just wasn't for me. I think age had a lot to do with that as well. I was too young coming out of school and kind of jumped into a course that, to be honest, I had no interest in. Um, But then teaching was always something that was on my mind. But something at that time when I was 18, I didn't think I was able to do. I had a good leaving search, but just certain things. I, I just hadn't the same focus as what I have now. Um, so yeah, kind of the fear of the unknown probably turned me off it initially. But again, with age, I went back to Mary I in Thurless at 26. So I think it was a good age to go back. I was well over the margin, the threshold for the mature student, which is 23. Um, and the college has just been fantastic ever since. It opened up doors to me that I didn't think were possible. Uh-huh. I excelled more than I ever thought I could. I put in effort much more than I ever thought was possible as well. And this is something, yeah, I think it was innate, it was inside of me, but it was certainly the lectures and Finn brought it out more. Mm-hmm. So I'm absolutely thrilled with the four years. We're nearly there. And yeah, also yeah. a really good point as well to bring up about the college is how important teaching is. Like we have our subjects, but teaching really is the central component to everything we do. Um, and as I said, even with school placement, now that we're online, it, it's really been facilitated so much. I mean, Charlie and Finn are there every single Friday. If you have questions, they're only an email away. You can email them at 10 o'clock in the night and they'll be sure to get back to you. So even at the hardest and kind of most tumultuous times, like it, they're, they're only a phone call or a fingertip away. So I couldn't recommend the college enough in that regard. The support is just phenomenal. The courses they offer are fantastic. Um, And just the community itself, the friends that I've met over the past four years and also the professional relationships you create, it opens up many doors. Even as Alicia probably knows as well, like our second year placement up until now, the amount of people that we've met professionally has just been unbelievable. Um, And Finn really facilitates this as well. So, yes. Thank you very much. Very kind, and thank you for that. And I'll go to Alicia. So, and maybe you tell us your background, Alicia. Yeah. So my background, actually, listening to Adele, there is quite similar to Adele. So, like when I did my leaving cert, I kind of like that as well. Just jumped into a course, uh, not really knowing what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to do Guelga, and I wanted to be a moon tour Guelga but I wasn't sure how to get there. And I think that was something maybe from secondary school, even myself at home, I didn't know how to get there or what I wanted to do with that. Um, So like Adele, I went to larger universities as well. And exactly, um, I couldn't have described it better, like Adele said, um, that it made me realize what I needed and what I wanted. And a larger university wasn't for me. So not only was the course not for me, but that kind of really large um, university kind of aspect just wasn't for me. Um, Similar to Adele as well, like I always felt that maybe I wasn't able to do it. And I was kind of nervous and even applying for um, my Gwilgan business course in MIC um, Thurless, I was kind of unsure and not sure if I wanted to do it or would I be able to do it. Um, But I took that plunge after working many years, I worked um, about seven years in retail. Um, So after working that length of time, I realized that I always wanted to be a Moontor Gwelga. I knew that that was just in me, but I was able to kind of relate that to the business world that I'd kind of been in for the past seven years and relate that to teaching. So when I was kind of looking at going back to courses, when I saw um, the course available at MIC Thurless, that was just perfect for me. And I think one thing that was really important for me was that kind of concurrent aspect of it, because being a mature student, the thoughts of maybe going back for four years and then having to do extra years after that to qualify was something maybe that I didn't really want to do. So seeing that kind of concurrent aspect was really important for me, that everything was done in the four years. Um, And like that, I was able to um, bring elements of um, my kind of life skills that I had got um, along the way and bring those into my teaching. And like Adele said as well, like the college are so good at 
letting you know that you're able to achieve and instilling that belief in you that yes you can do it yes you're going to be a great teacher um because I think there is that uncertainty and I think it is kind of common among mature students when you go back to college that you are kind of unsure if this is the right path maybe you have done things before and it hasn't worked out and you might be taking that kind of leap to see if it will work out for you um but the college is amazing at bringing that out in you and knowing that you can achieve in my time in the college I knew as well MIC Thayless was for me because of that kind of smaller um kind of college aspect that like um I think Sarah mentioned it as well the relationship with the lecturers and the lecturers wanting to know your name it sounds so small but it's something that just makes a massive difference that they want to get to know you they want to know your name and creates that culture of being able to ask questions um as well and just getting help if you do need it and which is something that is instilled in us as future teachers but also kind of reciprocated by the college also so kind of practicing what they preach um in the college um another thing as well is like Adele said just those professional kind of connections that you make throughout the few years are incredible as well and I was lucky enough for my third year um placement to go to Japan um for school observation in Tokyo and looking back now at that person who applied for the CEO and thinking of not only going to Japan or things like that but even just going out on school placement and succeeding and getting through it and actually loving it I don't think I ever would have thought that back then and I think I still had that kind of unsure element but the four years have flown and I have achieved and I have got there I'm at the end but there is no way I would have got there without the, the support of the college and the exact college that I am in I think that's something really important and that credit needs to be given to MIC Thurlis to Finn all the lectures that that was instilled in me that I could do it from the college and that definitely helped me proceed and get to where I am now nearly there the final hurdle well done, well done indeed <laughs> nearly there indeed and we'll finally we go to Aaron who's been waiting patiently and Aaron you're in first year so you've had an online experience uh, and maybe you'd like to tell us where you were before you joined us this year. Well funny enough I kind of came full circle I did my leaving cert in 2013 and before that I actually went to the open day of Mary Immaculate College way back then and I thought it was great and everything, but I'm kind of my own worst enemy. I always thought that maybe I wouldn't be able for it. Teaching, you know, I wouldn't have that ability. So I kind of got sidetracked, sidetracked and I did a PLC course in business and I loved it. And got sidetracked again, went into the healthcare course. PLC, loved that and ended up working seven years with adults with intellectual disabilities. So in a way I was kind of teaching them I was kind of unknown to myself I was nearly practicing already mm -hmm. and then had a tough year last year work-wise and to asked a friend that says I don't really know what to do and the friend says do you remember you were always talking about teaching which I had forgotten but obviously I said yeah okay so I applied for it and I says if I get it I'm doing it and I got it and I was delighted and since that open day in September or the introduction in September, I haven't looked back. It's been amazing. Everybody's been so, so, so nice. And like I said, I always like um, lacked a little bit of confidence. I always thought maybe I couldn't do this. But I think as Alicia was saying there, the lecturers are like, yes, you can do this. This is quite good. You know, the, the encouragement and the, the confidence that they give you is great. And plus, because I kind of benefit from a little bit of one-to-one -one tuition even online all you have to do is just email a lecture and they're there on a team's meeting the next day it's great it's been it's been more than i could have hoped now since i've started good stuff thank you aaron so four fabulous stories folks uh, and 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 i take the point about the teaching being central and and very very important but you're 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 studying different subjects. So maybe if I go to uh, Edel, you're 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 studying uh, the um, other studies. And, yeah, and, and business and, studies. Yeah. yeah. So I'm doing business studies and religious education along with obviously the educational component to that as well. The modules yeah, yeah. are just fantastic. 
Uh, I really and truly cannot believe how much I loved the religion course once I started it. It was something that I kind of felt comfortable with. I was good at English. I did well in it in the leave insert. So I just thought it was kind of going to be an essay based kind of four years and, and that kind of a thing. So I was comfortable with my writing skills. So I, I just thought it would be fine. Little did I know how fantastic of a subject it is. Like it's so interesting. And not even it's not just interesting to learn. It's fantastic to teach. It offers a space, I think, like no other subject does in a school environment. It's a space where people can really be diverse and inclusive and own themselves. Like you're dealing with kids that are 12 to kind of 18 years of age. And to see the maturity and the respect when they're learning about different religions and discuss the morality and all these things, it's just fantastic to see and to be a part of. I think oftentimes, like on placement, I'm learning as much from them as they're learning from me. Um, but the course is just brilliant. The modules are great. And Jonathan and Tom are two religious education lecturers and they're just their knowledge is unquantifiable. They're fantastic. And the, the knowledge that you gain within those lectures, I think in my year, my writing say in Finn, there was 2018 religion yeah. students, yeah. a yeah. tiny yeah. group. When you see the size of the lecture halls, it's, it's a really tiny number. So the questions that you can ask and get answered it, it, within the hour is just fantastic. And as I said, I attended a larger university before this and it just would have been impossible to kind of grow and develop in a lecture based situation the way I have. Um, and business studies is great as well. And um, there's a wide range of, of kind of different elements to that, too, from financial maths to marketing, economics. So whatever you're kind of good at, whatever your niche is in business, you're, you're certainly going to cover it. And I think the grading system is great as well across the board for both subjects. Uh, we start our QCA in second year. It gets larger then in third year and then the finally in fourth year. So it allows you to build yourself as well. It allows you to become better. It's set up that way. So if you have a rough year in the first year and you, you kind of pass and you're still unsure of your confidence or your skills, you know, if your confidence is lacking, to build up that way really, really helps with that. It helped me massively. Um, I started off by saying, well, look, if I don't like the first year, it's only a year. I'll just try and see. But it really wasn't that for me. I, I knew I always knew I wanted to be a teacher. I was just afraid to do it. Uh, that fear was taken away immediately after I entered our college just by how nice and approachable the lecturers are I know it's not an easy feat to go back to third level education but if you are going to go back and you're nervous about kind of your your skills and your abilities I definitely would recommend Mary I Thurless. Very good I get the sense and I Alicia you brought it up as well that you you're coming with a skill set already and I, I guess part of what we try and do in the college is to draw on that skill set to bring you to the next level, to the next area of development. And from like Alicia, from a Gaelga point of view, what advice would you give to somebody who, you know, might have a love for Gaelga, have a love for teaching Gaelga, but might have been in that environment for for a few years? What what advice would you give somebody thinking of joining us? Um, well, myself, like I was out, I, I didn't really speak Gaelga that much at all um, during my time um, outside of school at all, really, um, because I knew I wanted to be a Munter Gaelga and because I loved Gaelga so much. I did go back and do like just a mini night course, a uh, course of Krinish, just to kind of improve my grammar and things like that to keep it topped up. But my, my Gaelga Lauerha, my spoken Irish was not good um, at all. And it would have been in, in my leaving search, it would have been. Um, so that was something that I was worried about and conscious of um, starting in college. But you would be surprised how quickly that does come back. Um, I think with Gaelga, I think no matter whether you do kind of a, a third level degree or you do a master's or a PhD, you're, you're always learning. And I think with a language, you have to keep speaking it, you have to keep doing it. So there is that element kind of in first year that you will be getting back into it um especially kind of in your lectures you will be having Gaelga lectures so you'll kind of hear a bit more you can ask those questions but then there's those cardland kind of workshops um that you have as well and that that's a really um good way of kind of getting to grips with kind of that grammar and that spoken Irish and things like that as well so 
someone kind of starting and if you're if that's what you're worried about I would say just go for it um, because there is so many things that you can do whether it be in your own time and so many things that the college can do to help you improve um, with your Irish and we're constantly learning even um, out on placement at the minute I'm learning still learning Irish and speaking Irish every day um, even in an online setting so I think if if the Gaelga is something you're worried about don't let it be because there's plenty support there and there's so much that you can do yourself in order to improve as well. Excellent, very good. Thank you for that, Alicia. And, and Aaron, from from your perspective, uh, your chosen subjects are. Uh, yeah, I chose a uh, business and accounting. Uh huh. And even when I was doing the leave and surf, accounting was okay, but that was the one thing that was kind of holding me back from doing this course. I was thinking maybe it's not for me. But in seriousness, I've learned more in this one year than two years in Leave and Cert in the whole accounting curriculum because the lectures, Olive and Madeline, they're telling you not you're doing this because, but it's the reason why. Like they take it way back to the start and actually have you, you were talking the other day, Finn, about containment. Is it the, the way they're giving you, they're presenting you with the answer now and you're kind of figuring out the rules for it. Concept and, attainment, yeah. Yeah, concept yeah, yeah. attainment, yeah, that's yeah. it. And it's true, that's the way the lectures here, they're, they're taking it way back and giving it, well, this is why we're, think for yourselves why you do this. Mm. Whereas in Leave and Cert, they're just pegging information at you and you're either ducking or you're catching, you know. <laughs> um, but yes, they, so I had, did have worries coming into the accounting part of it and it's it's one of my best subjects now. Mm -hmm. which is great so um and for business as well the maths i thought would i'd struggle at but it was fine and maria was great lecture for the first semester and um and in fact the whole i know the whole class found maths really really enjoyable part of it so yeah excellent very good and just to, to say as well um those academic supports are there be it you're concerned about your writing there's academic support to improve your writing. And we got Ruth in the library doing a lot of work there for students as well, uh, as well as the Academic Learning Centre. And we also have then uh, supports for Gaelga and, and, and mathematics. So there's there, there's additional supports. And I guess one of the one of the, the questions I'd have for you is what I often say when people ask me about Thorless and Sarah, come in again if you can on this one, is the um Probably the greatest support is actually your peers, is, is the people that are in your company. And as a mature, you'll be one of many matures. I know matures often think like, and by the way, for anybody who's not sure, as Zidel said, a mature is over 23. So, you know, <laughs> I don't know where that leaves people like me if over 23 is mature. But anyway, very mature, ripe. <laughs> but um, from, from the first, say that, Sarah. Something like myself, very no, mature. No, oh, no, 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 Sarah, no, no, no. <laughs> we're, we're not, we're not, we're not there. Okay. Um, <laughs> what, what I would say, what I would say is the from a college perspective, we find the students who, for one reason or another, are seeing Thorless as a second chance. Maybe they've been in another college, or maybe they've 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 gone into work, as you were saying, Aaron, and they they needed a, a, a change and and. Quite often, it's not so much a change as in doing something different. It's doing something that you always wanted to do. But from our perspective, I suppose I'm, I'm, I'm long winded on this is what I'm trying to say is the matures are most welcome because you bring a dynamic, you bring uh, life skills, you bring a different voice and you bring an energy into the classes. So, you know, for anybody listening, it's quite the opposite. The matures are the people that we really do celebrate having in our company for all of those reasons. And while you as a mature might feel you stand out like a sore thumb, very quickly you realize that there are other matures in your company as well. Uh, and I think that 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 always helps. But equally, it's 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 kind of cool and nice, as Sarah said as well, to, you know, to be a little bit older than the 18 year olds coming in from college, but to make friends with them as well. And I know from from my experience working with matures, I know the work you have done in mentoring and nurturing some students who are homesick, who are away from home for the first time, are are eighteen or maybe nineteen years of age, and just need that little bit that little bit of support. So I guess 
that's what I mean by the greatest resource is is the, is, is the college community uh, and that that you look after each other. So I guess small small is beautiful in that sense that we're 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 able to connect. Now this was supposed to be a five minute conversation. God help whoever has to edit all of this. So apologies in advance. Um, but as as we draw to a close, um, and thank you so much for your lovely words, and I'll pay you later. But no, as as we draw to a close, and thank you for your for your lovely words and and your engagement today and every day. Um, is there any thing that you'd like to add uh, in in giving a message to somebody who's out there who's listening to 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 this and who might be you know might be interested but mightn't be too sure uh, just to kind of reiterate what Alicia said go for it um, you're not going to lose anything at the very very worst you're going to meet a great bunch of people and try something new and challenging uh, a big fear for mature students going back would be the fear of failure. Can I do it? Will I fit in? Am I actually able for this? Am I mad giving up a full time job to go back to, ed to education? The answer is no, you're not. You're questioning it for a reason. You need a challenge. I remember reading somewhere uh, lately or could it be Nigel actually that came out with this. He said the purpose, what was it? The, the purpose of life is to find what you love. But the meaning of life is to share is to share that love. And that's something I think that teaching is in essence. It's fantastic. Collaboration, mixing with people, learning yourself and, and sharing your talent with other people is, is brilliant. And that's something that MIC Thurless does in leaps and bounds. It's really a fantastic place. So if you're doubting it at all, don't just do it. OK. We'll, 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 we'll apply the just do it approach. Thank you, Edel. Alicia, do you have anything think, to add? Yeah, just to come in and just, just what you mentioned there about, just about mature is kind of being in that college kind of atmosphere and things like that and kind of will, like Adele said, will you fit in and things like that. I think, and, and like you said, Finn, there about kind of nurturing other students who maybe might be homesick or things like that. I think that is, that is something that I, I'm sure that we would have encountered as matures, you know, kind of giving maybe advice to maybe um, that, that kind of younger generation. But also I can't emphasize enough that as much as you might bring those kind of life skills and those life experiences to some other students, maybe who are just fresh out of the leaving cert, they, they share so many things with you in other ways as well. So there's that other kind of collaboration that works too. So although you might um, learn, like you're going to learn so much from the, them as well. Maybe it's you're not getting to grips on the academic writing and you've been to the workshops, but it might be one small thing that they may have learned during their leaving cert that might help you. And I think that's really important as well, that it kind of works both ways. So as much as you kind of play a role with them and you mightn't have a knowledge on one thing, you will learn so much um, um, from them as well. And I'm sure like they learn so much from matures as well that those kind of younger students as well and just to go back to what Idel said as well about just kind of jumping in and taking the chance the worst thing that could happen is that you don't like it and now you're one step closer to finding what you do like um and I actually think Finn that might have been something that you said on one of our first days in college actually I think that the worst thing that can happen is that you realize it's not for you and then you realize what you actually do want to do um so I think that's something that that is important as well that you won't know unless you take the chance so definitely go for it um along the way you'll pick up new skills anyway and you'll never know they might um benefit you in what you do want to do Excellent. Thank you. Alicia. And another thing, Finn, I know a lot of people since they started the course maybe found out that teaching wasn't for them, but they still have a business degree and a degree in either religious education, Gwailga mm -hmm. or accountancy that they can do lots of different things with as well. So that's important to note. If, if you're kind of second guessing the teaching part, there's a degree there also readily yeah. available and you can teach in businesses and companies different different positions like that it doesn't necessarily have to be a classroom so if that's your fear I would kind of <laughs> leave that one at the door because there's so many things that the degree can bring if it's not teaching it can be a million other things okay that that's a very good point as well and it links with Alicia's one about the concurrent because they're both happening at the same time anyway and yeah there are so many skills uh, that you learn through your teaching that you can apply in in the workforce anyway, uh, be it leadership, management, induction, mentoring, all, all, all of that. Absolutely. 
very good. Um, Sarah, if you you don't you don't have to come on camera if that's a problem. If you just wanted to say maybe one bit of advice for somebody thinking of joining us who happens to be uh, classified as a mature student. Yeah, sorry, hi Finn. Yeah, it's just the area might be a little bad if you can hear me. Hopefully. No, we can hear you. You're oh, fine. Okay, that's Go good. For it. Um, yeah, no, like that and like what the girls are saying, Alicia and Nidel, just to reiterate that, I suppose, as in, um, I wouldn't think twice about it. Now, looking back, I'm like, um, and it's only been a few months for me, like it's only been, I don't even know, seven months now at this stage, but um, I can't, I can't imagine myself doing anything different at the moment and uh, I'm loving it. I'm loving every minute of it and I just, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised I didn't do it earlier and, um, but like Finn, you always say, there's a time and a place and what's for you won't pass you. So, um, I believe in that and I think that even if if you visited the college um, it's such a, a, a warm environment that um, that I believe that you'll think it's for you if it is for you so um, yeah. That's Thank you Sarah it. yeah and that that's one of the the, the, the many downsides obviously of, of Covid is we can't share the space and and the space itself is is powerful never mind the people who occupy it um, so you know it's a it's it's a majestic building on a majestic setting and it is a little oasis and as as you kindly said it is a place where you're allowed to grow develop and blossom and um and maybe give things and give yourself more to the point another chance at becoming who you were always supposed to be which is tara westover's piece i think and uh, that we shared as well with the four yeah. tiers right. and and sarah yeah because you bought the book didn't you <laughs> I did, yeah. It's very good. Yeah, yeah. That that yeah, that t Tara Westover, yeah, educated. Um and that's that's, Finn, that's I, I recently used that and referenced you. <laughs> I thought you said that. <laughs> okay, just, I swear, yeah. just don't tell Tara. But it, it it is on the slides. There's a picture of the book. There's a picture of the author. <laughs> yeah, Omar Ku, anyway. <laughs> it's my reference. <laughs> Asher, ah, sure, who knows? We might be related. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, and and Aaron, finally, one one piece of advice you'd give to if you if you met Aaron, uh, the Aaron that you were this time last year, what 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 would you be saying? What bit of advice would you give? Oh, I'd start by slapping him on the head and saying, "Doing it, do it." You know, it's I mean, like education is probably it's the best investment you can do you know and like that it, this year's absolutely yeah. flown i have three years left they're gonna the girls will tell you they're gonna fly as well so um yeah just do it and again if you have any problems i mean the lectures they respond to you with i don't know what they do outside of school but they respond to you within an hour you mm -hmm. know with an answer and are you okay and mm -hmm. just great real real warm environment like that yeah very good OK, I think on that note, we'll draw to a close. Can I thank you all so much for giving up of your, your time? Very busy schedule. I know year fours are out in placement. Aaron and Sarah uh, have many an assignment to complete as well as we approach the Easter break. So uh, if you are out there and you're interested in joining us, you might see Del and Alicia doing postgrad work, but you most definitely will see Aaron and uh, Sarah uh, in September and I think that's another dimension to the work as well that the matures look out for the matures as well in that sense and um, you know uh, it's part of us all looking out for each other so thank you so much it's been a pleasure